morning, dear students. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the elements of drama. Uh, the dramatic elements fall into three categories. Uh, literary elements, number one, literary elements, number two, technical elements, number three, performance elements. Number one, the literary elements of drama. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher whose writings still influence modern and contemporary drama. He was the first to write about the essential elements of drama more than 2,000 years ago. While literary concepts have changed slightly over the years, Aristotle's dramatic elements are still used as criteria for defining and evaluating the works of playwrights. Aristotle considered uh, six elements of drama and these elements are essential, according to him, are essential to any drama. So, we have at first classical elements, classical elements, those laid out by Aristotle. And the first of these elements is the plot. Uh, the plot is the logical sequence of events in a literary work. The German critic Gustav Freytag, in his famous book Technique of the Drama, written in 1863, introduced an analysis of plot that is known as Freytag's Pyramid. He, can, he described the typical plot of a five-act play as a pyramidal shape consisting of uh, the exposition, the inciting action, the rising action or complication, complication of the events the climax, uh, the falling action or reversal, uh, the resolution or sometimes catastrophe, and then the denouement. As for the exposition or the introduction of a play, it sets the tune or mood, introduces the characters and the setting, and provides necessary background information or foreshadows upcoming events. This is the purpose of the exposition, either to foreshadow or uh, to retrospect past events. The inciting action is the single event that sparks the main action or the main conflict. It occurs at that point in the play when something happens to the main character that sets the main conflict in motion. The rising action or complication is a series of events that uh, that develop the conflict 
until it reaches the climax. The climax is the highest point of interest or suspense in the plot, where the fortunes of the hero or protagonist are reversed, which in turn determine the future course of events and the eventual working out of the conflict. The falling action or reversal is all of the events that follow the climax until it reaches the denouement. Uh, after the following action, we have the uh, resolution or catastrophe. It is the point at which the, at which the central conflict is ended or resolved. It is a stage wherein the action ends in success or failure, in case uh, 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 there is a kind of failure at the end, we call it a catastrophe for the protagonist, of course. The conflicts are settled, the mystery is solved, or the misunderstanding is cleared away at this stage, the resolution. Then, the denouement follows the resolution or catastrophe. It includes any following events that tie up loose ends. If the play ends with the fall or death of the main character, a happy ending or a catastrophic ending, then the denouement is known as the catastrophe. The second classical element of drama is the theme. The theme is the main idea or topic to the play. In some cases, the theme of a play is obvious, very clear. At other times, in other plays, it is quite subtle, obscure. Number three of the elements uh, the characters. Characters are the people, sometimes animals or ideas. These people, these characters, portrayed by the actors in the play. The roles are performed on the stage by the actors. It is the characters who move the action or plot, the action of the play, forward. Characters are assessed on the basis of what they say and do, and what the other characters say about them. The main character is called the hero or protagonist in classical and renaissance drama. When the character is portrayed as brave or novel, he or she is called a hero or heroine. However, the main character can be an everyday person with normal qualities, good or evil, and hence called a protagonist. Often opposing the hero is the villain or antagonist. As for number four, the dialogue. It refers to the words written by the playwright and is spoken by the characters in the play. The dialogue helps move the action of the play along. Number five, music or rhythm. While music is often featured in drama, in this case, Aristotle was referring to the rhythm of the actor's voices the rhythm of the voices of the actors as they speak. Number six, the spectacle. Uh, spectacle refers to the visual elements of a play. Everything you see on the stage, the sets, 
the costumes, special effects, etc. Spectacle is everything that the audience sees as they watch the play. Then we move on to discuss the modern literary elements of drama. In addition to the previous sex laid out by Aristotle, we have more. Number one of these modern dramatic elements, convention. What is convention? Convention are the necessary techniques, methods, or devices used by the playwright and director to create the desired dramatic effect. Conventions are validated by an implicit agreement. Implicit agreement between the author on the one hand and the audience on the other for solving the problems in representing reality representing reality taswir al waqa that are posed by a particular artistic medium which here is the stage in watching a modern production of a shakespearean play for example the audience welcomes the convention by which a presenium stage of course the presenium stage is in that part of the stage in the front of the curtains uh, by which a presenium stage with three walls represents a room with four walls this is a convention an agreement the audience also accepts the convention of characters speaking in blank verse as in Shakespearean plays, instead of prose, and uttering their private thoughts in the form of soliloquies or asides, as well as the convention by which actions presented on a single stage in less than three hours, for instance, they represent events which take place in many different places and over maybe a span of many years. Number two, the diction. Sometimes called language or style. Diction is the selection of words, phrases, sentence structures and figurative language that constitute the dramatic work. A writer's diction can be analyzed under a great variety of categories such as such as the degree to which the vocabulary and phrasing is abstract or concrete, Latin or Anglo-Saxon in origin, colloquial or formal technical or common then number three the audience of course the audience is the group of people watching the play many playwrights and actors consider the audience to be the most important element of drama for the conflict the conflict is the internal or external struggle between opposing forces, ideas, not necessarily forces, maybe ideas or interests, that creates this uh, struggle, creates dramatic tension. Five, the sitting. The sitting is the time and place of the action, of the incidents. But not only this. In addition to the social environment that controls the characters. Number six, suspense. Suspense is a feeling of uh, uncertainty as to the outcome. The outcome is, is uncertain. 
This feeling used to build interest and excitement on the part of the audience. Then we have soliloquy, monologue, and aside. The three are very similar in nature. Uh, the soliloquy, it is the act of talking to oneself, whether silently or loudly. In drama, it denotes the convention by which a character alone or uh, alone on uh, the stage. The character is alone on the stage. He utters his or her thoughts aloud. So he is alone and he speaks loudly. Two stipulations of a soliloquy. As for the monologue, it is a lengthy loud speech. It is long and loud by a single character who expresses his or her private thoughts in the presence of other characters. So he is surrounded by other characters but speaks alone, a long speech loudly. The aside is slightly different. It is a short speech, not a long one, by a character in which he or she expresses to the audience his or her thought or intention. Uh, but the most important thing about the sit about the audience, uh, sorry, about the aside, is that the speech is inaudible, cannot be heard. To the other characters on the stage, they uh, pretend to be, or uh, they pretend not to be hearing what uh, the the character who performs it uh, aside is uh, delivering or speaking loudly. Of course, he speaks to the uh, to the audience directly. Uh, Number two of the dramatic elements, uh, the technical elements. The first of these is the scenery or the set. Uh, the scenery or the set is a theatrical equipment such as curtains, backdrops, or platforms used in a dramatic production to communicate environment. Costumes, clothing and accessories worn by actors to portray character and period. We have here different pictures or images of different uh, sceneries or sets. Number three, the props or properties. The props are any portable or movable objects or items that appear on the stage or are used by an actor to help enhance the dramatic performance, such as a telephone, a book, a weapon, a chair, a crown, a mask, whatever. Number four, the lights. The lights, uh, the placement, intensity, and uh, color of the lights to help communicate the environment, mood, or feelings. Number five, uh, number five, the sound. The effects an audience hears during performance to communicate character uh, context or 
environment. Then number six, the makeup, which includes uh, costumes, wigs, and body paint, for example, used to transform an actor into a character from a single shade to another. Then we move on to the performance elements. Number one of these is the acting. The acting is the use of face, body, and voice to portray a character. Number two, character motivation. It is a reason or reasons, maybe, for a character's behavior. Uh, it is an incentive, could be an incentive or inducement for further actions of a character. Number three, breath control. It is the proper use of the lungs. Uh, for maximum capacity and efficiency of breath for speaking. Number four, the vocal expression. It means how an actor uses his or her voice to convey a certain feature or a certain mood of a character. Inflection which is number five. Inflection is the change in pitch. P P I T C H. The change in the pitch or loudness. It means loudness of the voice. Gestures. It is any movement of the actor's head, uh, shoulder, arm, hand, leg or foot to convey a certain meaning. Number seven, the final feature or the final element of performance is the facial expression. It's very important. It is the physical and vocal aspects used by an actor to convey mood, feeling, or uh, personality. Uh, uh, thank you, dear students, for your good listening and see you uh, in next lectures, inshallah.